see you again. Oh, thank you so yeah. much, Alan. And Pleasure I, to be here. It was good to talk to you on the phone the other day, and I really want to catch up on your take on things in, in Darfur and so forth, because you really follow that, thank among you. other things. And in the audience, welcome. Welcome very much to conversation. A pleasure to have the uh, welcome to the program. Uh, Stephen Broner, he's a professor of political science. And we've done programming in the past. We've been in touch. I know he's very involved that we'll get to. He's been involved in uh, issues involving uh, Darfur and other matters, but he also has a wide-ranging take on the human condition and political evolution of world society. Stephen, so good to welcome you. Thank said you again. so much. Pleasure to be here. Why don't we go back once again? It just we did it before uh, the program, but could you share you just in a brief kind of way background? Born, raised, educated a little bit, and then we'll wade into talking about the human condition. Well, I was born in uh, New York City in Washington Heights, okay. and uh, this was a German Jewish community. Right. And I went to City College of New York. Excuse me. Yeah. German Jewish. Yeah. Is the Jewish community divided that way meaningfully between the German and the Russian? Uh, completely. Really? Yeah. Could you? T I don't mean to digress, but that's really interesting to me. The German Jewish community would live in one part of New York, and the Russian. Yeah. Really, share yeah. that with me a little bit, because I wasn't was familiar a, with uh, it. This was a very common uh, it is. development. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now it's changed somewhat. Yeah. But uh, this was. I was born in 1949, mm -hmm. and uh, the the community in Washington Heights yeah. was an exceptionally well-known one. Was that uh, around German the, Jews. Was that around the university there? Or no, 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 this is further up. Okay. This is around, uh, uh, this is from uh, roughly 168th Street to oh, 200th Englewood? Street. Up to, or up 200 years, yeah. Dykeman. And, and yeah. um, mm -hmm. this, this was, uh, the, the Jewish exiles from Hitler moved en masse. First, th first they went right. to the Lower East Side. Okay. Then they went up to, uh, most of them went to Upper Harlem. Uh -huh. And then they moved further up. And they tra the, the German Jewish communities tended to stick together closer than necessarily to the Eastern European Jewish communities. No, I think that, that many of the Jewish communities stuck uh, close together. Well, uh, what I'm trying a distinction between the Eastern European and yes, the German yeah. was a distinctive thing between the yes. yeah, among the Germans. And, and that was also what, true in the Europe. What was the distinct? Oh, okay. Yeah, well, that would be there. You can understand. But what was it that? Uh, okay, uh, that's a different culture, different language. That's true, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's sure, uh, of course. It's like a different nation. style of service. Sure, absolutely. Uh, yeah. There were all kinds of differences. Yeah. And uh, yeah, absolutely. The yeah. Uh, the sort of points of unity for Zionism yeah. really came after Auschwitz. Okay, not right, before. Right, right, uh, right. There was right. deep, deep divisions in the Jewish community. Okay, yeah. And, and they so still sort of exist, but it's not interesting. that much. I'd always assumed Jewish, Jewish, you know, but you're right. And of course, there was a different national yeah. background, and that was really relevant. And uh, Okay, sorry, I, uh, you caught me yeah. off guard with that. All I right. hadn't realized it. So, so, so the point yeah. is, uh, so I was born in, uh, in Washington Heights in New York. I went to City College of uh -huh. New York, okay, uh, which we, we used to call the Little Red Schoolhouse, and uh, was that up on 138th? That 137th. Great street. school. Great school. Great tradition. Wonderful yeah, school. Absolutely. And great. most of our teachers were exiles from uh, from uh, fascism. Yeah, uh, weren't the there a few down at the new school also? Also, many from the new s at the new school. Right. Yeah. But okay. I was very lucky in the teachers I had there. Uh huh. Um, and and uh, you studied what there? I studied pol political science and, and politics comparative politics. literature. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, um, in gr I went to graduate school at Berkeley. Okay. Uh, University of California at Berkeley, and I got my PhD there. Uh huh. And I in studied politi political science. Also in political science, uh -huh. and I studied philosophy in Germany on okay. a Fulbright. Oh, you got a Fulbright. Good in, for you. Yeah. In oh. in Tubingen, that was really quite wonderful. That actually. that that's really something to get to get a Fulbright. I think. I mean, it's a, a great honor, really, the and uh, gives you opportunity to travel. Honor, and stuff. Yes, it was wonderful, and it, it built um, sort of my outlook. It gave me a different view on uh, take on academia and on philosophy. The Fulbright or the travel? Both. Both. Okay. Yeah, yeah they might go together. <coughs> yeah. And um, anyway, I. Uh, then wound up with a job. I wound up teaching at Rutgers University, where mm -hmm. I still am. Yeah. And um, I started basically dealing with issues of revolution and mass movements right. and mass ideologies, uh -huh. uh, mostly in the West. I published a lot on that. Yeah. 
and I also worked on different kinds of philosophies. Um, in fact, I, if I can plug the book, I Absolutely. just came out with a uh, little biography, a new edition of my little uh, biography of Albert Camus. Oh, great, right. that's uh, right. Writer. We talked on the phone about that. So yeah. He's a major figure, yeah. A wonderful figure. Yeah. And uh, this is the 15th anniversary of his death. Oh, is it really? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. So anyway, I did uh, works on socialism, on 20th century, uh, on 20th century philosophy, right. and uh, European uh, political history. Okay, you are really involved, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, then I uh, I began moving, and I was always interested in the Middle East, in with regard to Israel and Palestine. Right. Okay. And I became associated with Conscience International. Wha wha okay, what which is a yeah. um, a an advocacy group for human rights, okay. medical assistance, okay. uh, but also political uh, political rights, and I became chair after uh, before the. Uh, I was in Iraq before the war, uh, with uh, U.S. Academics for Peace. The, the, the Gulf War, the ninety one. No, the, no, the oh last just one. Just now. Yeah, th in, two in 2000. Well, there was, there was a war in 91, 92. Too. Yeah, but that I wasn't You were involved. aware? You weren't aware? Or, or were you involved in that or thinking about I it? I was that? thinking about it, yeah. but I didn't, I, I wasn't really an activist. Could no. I ask you a little sidebar thing? The family setting, was it an intellectually stimulating and warm <coughs> setting you had at the dinner table and that kind of stuff and encouraging you along intellectual lines? Because you've done so very well. I've seen your CV. It goes on and on and well, on. You've you. been very, very active. And um, no, my my parents were working class people. My father mm -hmm. uh, w repaired watches. And very was delicate jeweler. work. <laughs> uh, it was a very important thing when you, you come in as an exile. You have to have a trade. Right, right. And that puts you in a good they position. They were actually from Germany. Yeah. yeah okay. And, um, and my mother also did uh, various working worked in different uh, shops and so on yeah. and uh, but they were always very very supportive of me I was very close to them they were supportive of you academically academically and they encouraged you and in your politically. education and politically yeah. and the pol politics of the house and so forth were, were roughly were what always would be called uh, progressive uh, yeah 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 it okay. was a social democratic social democratic thing uh, yeah right attitude yeah yeah okay and um, there was a sense that you know most people work hard and uh, they have difficult lives. Yeah. And the aim of politics should be to try and make those lives better. And ameliorate. Ameliorate. Yeah. Them, yeah. 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 And they were in favor. So you'd have those kind of discussions around the dinner. Yeah. Table. When I was a kid. Yeah. I think that matters a lot, don't you? Uh, I sometimes yeah. I think it matters almost more than what you do when you get into a formal education. Maybe uh, I don't know. But the family setting. When you're talking about something other than just some mundane thing, you know, like a lot of people do, you know what the I mean? Uh, yeah, there was social concern. Yeah. Yes, there yeah, was social right. concerns. Right. And I certainly felt confident and respected, and uh, they were great role models. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and I, so I wound up working with these two organizations, and this led me first to Iraq before the outbreak of the war. Then we uh, we did uh, we tried to build rapprochement uh, connections with uh, Iran. Um, I visited uh, Palestine. I've uh, and, but my f prime focus, I guess, has uh, or in a way, it's uh, my heartfelt focus yes. of the last few years has been dealing with uh, Sudan and Darfur. Yeah, we're going to want to get to that. And yeah, um, yeah. so I've been to Darfur. Twice I've been to uh, three of the major cities. Okay, yeah. Uh, for each region of Darfur. Right, right. You know, Darfur is very big. I know that. Yeah. Darfur is the size of France. I know. It is and strange. Sudan is the size yeah. of Western Europe. I'm hip. Sudan. I had uh, my friend Ali Trafi is the president of General Assembly now. Indeed. We did a program with him. He said Sudan could feed the world. It's huge. Huge. Yeah. yeah right. And right. you have to imagine there are about 400 languages. Well, 400 languages in Africa, you talking? No, 400 uh, languages in the Sudan. How can there be 400 languages? You got to make a, a mistake. You got an extra zero uh, in there no, or something. No, no. 400? Yeah. There are 80 tribes with their own militias. 
80 tribes with their own yeah. 400 language that's not dialect well, they're different they're that's different not dialect. cultures no i mean i'm no expert on okay, um, okay, linguistics yeah. but but that's uh, an awful lot in that you know well how many languages are there in Europe? about 5000 in the world i think but i think in, you know think in europe there are yeah. many many languages yeah but it's about 5000 in the world i think that I mario pie wrote a really interesting book did you ever know it was no. popular but on language Language yeah. is really important differentiation among the peoples of the world. Indeed. Right? Yeah. Indeed. You're too young to remember or be involved in the Vietnam time. No, See, I you was jumped right up to a very modern time. When you, I was thinking 91. No, I was, uh, as a kid, I was uh, involved in the anti-Vietnam movement. You would have been, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you were a peace, peace oriented. Actor, yeah. yeah. And that stayed with me. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I've I know, uh, I know. Um, I believe that, you know, some principles of human rights involve in a certain way, a uh, commitment to building cosmopolitanism means building connections between countries, yeah. building trust, trying in some way to uh, compromise on interests while understanding the differences in ideology, religion, and the like. And um, if I want, if you can put it this way, when you intervene in a place. Yeah. You have to know what you're doing. You have to have very clear objectives. You have to have very clear uh, exit strategies. And you have, very, have to have very clear ideas of just what it is you want to do. At a strategic level? At a, at a strategic and a tactical level, both. Uh, yeah. And also uh, maybe just a, a reading of the human, uh, uh, the human condition, condition or, or a larger context within which you understand the, in which the strategic notions are put. You studied that, like uh, yeah. the Heartland and, 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 and Mackinder and all that kind well of I stuff, studied geopolitics? I, and I studied geopolitics with a very great um, Morgenthau? Did you with study? Hans Morgenthau, Oh, yeah. Morgenthau was a giant. Yeah. You, had, you, you studied with yeah, him? Yeah, he, uh, he was for a year at City College, and okay. I was with him. And also, yeah. I studied with... Uh, Henry Pachter, who was a I great, uh, yeah. he's less famous, but uh -huh. he was uh, really a great, a great his political historian. Yeah, and, um, and George Kennan, you read the X article and I all read, that. Uh, I, re I read Kennan. I've, I, yeah. uh, I'm very influenced by E. H. Carr. You know, John. Yes. John yeah. Maynard Keynes was a great analyst of politics as really, well. Really, yeah, we think of him as an economic. Yeah. Uh, but the economic, it used to be called political economy in Europe, didn't it? Always, uh, and still uh, was. And yeah, the two are intimately related. Often intimately related. Uh -huh. But the the point is, one has to be very clear in dealing with conflicts about the difference between principles and interests. For example, yeah. if you're going to deal in um, in the Sudan, yeah, okay, back one, to uh, uh, one can't simply begin without reference to um, religion. One can't say, well, we want to find a secular person and uh, begin that way. Right, right. You're going to have to find progressive people there. Mm -hmm who will push a progressive agenda within their, uh, within the mosque, so to speak. Okay, you've studied, you've done all this study? But okay, well go ahead. No, go I ahead. wanted yeah, to yeah, say, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, the interesting thing with, um, with uh, Darfur and is that the political climate has been completely shaped by three interconnected organizations. Okay, cool. One is called Save Darfur. Every student knows uh, knows is about that. Is that Mia Farrow and so forth? Or? This is uh, this is um, Eric Reeves, who's the, the founder. But uh, they've uh, employed Ruth Messenger was involved in this. Really? Uh, yeah, and uh, they've employed celebrities very well, like Mia Farrow. Another group is the International Crisis Group, and another group is called Enough. Okay. Just Enough. Okay. And. It's a real problem. It's mm -hmm. the sense that one thinks of the terrible genocide and starts with that assumption, mm -hmm. the problems are for, mm -hmm. and begins with the problem of genocide, and then one says, well, we have to do something. Mm -hmm. We have to do something. Mm -hmm. And the question, of course, is what do you want to do? Well, maybe the question is what's the problem? Or wh where do we begin? What's the beginning? Uh, the beginning is the assumption that, uh, for now anyway, that genocide is still the central yeah, issue. Yeah, it's horrible, yeah. However, yeah. 
Genocide peaked in 2004. Okay, that's good that it did, but it's still and there. It's I mean, well, it's, still it's moving down. Okay, good. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Radically down. What was the source? I mean, what was the source of the power structure or the uh, conflict? And the maybe it would be good to make it clear to the audience. The conflicts in uh, Darfur and Sudan mm -hmm. have been going on for a very, very, very long time. Thousands of They're years? They're conflicts that are, that are tribal, tribal right. ethnic, religious, uh, familial, mm -hmm. yeah. um, conflicts between cattle, uh, cattle mm -hmm. herders and farmers. Mm -hmm. There are all kinds of conflicts. Islam figure in? As a div uh, well, a a Darfur a is, is, Islam is Islamic. Yeah, are there uh, they're not animists and so forth somewhere? That's in somewhere? the south. Yeah, is that a okay? Is that part of the dialect well or part of the uh, the dynamic? You have to think to yourself. Mm. Darfur is the north. Mm -hmm. That's what we think of as Sudan. Okay. This is the the, let's call it the regime in Khartoum. Okay. There's the mm. s which is Islamic. Yeah. And has Sharia law. Right. Okay. There's the south. Mm -hmm. which is animist, Christian, okay. and also some uh, uh, Islamic elements. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's this constant what battle West? between North and South. Uh. West is Darfur. Okay, yeah, yeah. And Darfur is divided into three parts. Okay. It's very complicated. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. fair enough. You said and 400 languages. Yeah. That's staggering. Yeah. And mm. the, uh, the amount of battle, the, the parties engaged in different kinds of battles. Okay. They number two dozen. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Now, fight between Dar uh, between Khartoum mm -hmm. and um, and Darfur has been vicious and difficult, and the uh, there are now 153 camps that have been set up. Good grief! Yeah, for about two and a half million to three million. It's a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. it's a lot of people. How You're many right. are in the overall of Sudan and Darfur? Uh, the population? Uh, do you happen to know? Maybe you don't. Not offhand. Okay, okay, okay. Um, mm. But I do know that in the Congo, mm -hmm. there've been over the last ten years about five million people dead, mm -hmm. and it's much Congo less. Congo is of awful. The things that are going on. But now. why? I understand. But why? Have you been there? No, I haven't been. To the okay, Congo. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, but the question is, why has, uh, has Darfur become this kind of an issue? Right. N Congo hasn't. Okay, you're going to fill us in on that. Right? Well, or I your like understanding. What's the source of the conflict? I mean, where does the source, what, what's, what's it all about, Alfie? I mean, in terms of the Sudan and Darfur, does it have something to do with economics? Does it have something to do with religion or Well, like I power? said, there are I mean, all these different yeah, factors okay, that, yeah. come into right. that come into play. But the way this is presented is mm. that there is um, a single villain, and the single villain is Omar Bashir. I was going to say Bashir, yeah. Who is, uh, of course, the president of Cart the Khartoum yeah, regime. Yeah, right, right. And this gentleman is no peach. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't want to He's not a sweetheart? Not a sweetheart. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. But the <laughs> basic, uh, and there have been uh, conflicts that have, uh, taken place, uh, attempts to develop a, uh, a policy on the part of um, of the United States. What about the African Union? What or well, uh, I'm I'm sorry, I didn't mean to step on your. No, it's I'm okay. Sorry. It's yeah. uh, it, it's yeah. just sort of a complicated. Yeah, I'm uh, sure. Right, it is complicated uh, situation. Right. Basically, the uh, what I'm concerned about now mm -hmm. is that. And I think the best way to make this clear is that Save Darfur and these other organizations mm. have developed a kind of program for dealing with the problem. If you'll recall, at the time of the Olympics in China, okay. yeah. uh, there was an attempt to put pressure mm -hmm. on, uh, on, uh, um, on Khartoum and call it the Genocide Olympics. China was to be pressured mm -hmm. to, interv to intervene and, and pressure uh, uh, Khartoum to change its policies to Darfur, which have been genocidal and difficult. They have serious interest there, don't they, China? I China uh, basically has produced 20% of the wealth of Africa as a whole. Wow, really? Okay. Uh, it's, mm. uh, it has 
and it's in 2000, expanding. It's expanding. In 2000, there was about six million, six billion dollars worth of investment. Mm -hmm. By 2015, there should be a hundred million, a hundred billion. Wow. Okay. Uh, this is a very serious matter. Mm -hmm. And the uh, the way to this argument is phrased at the moment is that first we have to pressure and shame China. And so if you remember... Is Mikhail the argument coming from where? Uh, from Save Darfur. Save Darfur. Okay, okay, yeah, right. We have to pressure China. Okay, yeah. That's the first yeah. thing. To hold back those T-bills or something. Uh, they got yeah, all our T-bills. I don't know how shame much we can them. pressure them. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Well, that's the point. Oh, that's this with the tie into the Olympics. I yeah. see. Right, okay, right. And that doesn't... Uh, that didn't work. Mm -hmm. No. So the next step mm -hmm. on a sliding scale of right. activity mm -hmm. is to say, well, what we need is, sa is sanctions. Yeah, they always go to sanctions. And yeah. actually, this is something President Obama is now dealing with, the question oh. of sanctions, right San now. Wait a minute. Sanctions on China no, against Darfur? No, sanctions no. on Darfur. Basur. Uh, uh, Basur. Uh, sanctions on Bashir. Yeah, Bashir. And on uh, on Khartoum, uh -huh. right, right, but in fact, every th the sanctions haven't worked either. Okay, because the wealth of Khartoum, uh, of the Khartoum regime has actually risen, mm -hmm. and uh, when the United States puts on a sanction, other trading partners can take advantage of like it, like China. Right, exactly. Yeah, same so thing might apply with other so places. Now yeah. It Indeed, mm -hmm. and so the uh, so the next like uh, Iran, the, yeah. So yeah. the next uh, uh, possible situation is what's called a no-fly zone. In That's other what words, we had in Iraq. Remember those fly zones in yeah. Iraq? Yeah, uh, yeah. Except yeah. in mm. Sudan, yeah. we're dealing with this enormous territory. Yeah. So even supporters of this position, mm -hmm. like President Ambassador Susan Rice, uh -huh. has re has retracted it. Mm -hmm. Has then they retracted the no-fly notion? Yeah, basically it's nobody an thinks ineffectual. It, nobody thinks this will work. Okay. And then comes the question, what about military action? Mm -hmm. Because if the other things don't work, uh -huh. we have to do something. Okay, could I introduce the African Union now? Or is there any relevance to that? Uh, I it's was headed by our, our man Muammar Gaddafi. Now. Well, it is, an, it, it, our it made is man. now. Yeah. But the real issue is for the United States, there's been great skepticism for supporting the African Union, which has only increased because of Muammar Gaddafi. Well, okay, and that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, the skepticism increased because he's the president of it now, or the head Obviously, of it. but there wasn't much. Because they distrust him or don't understand him yeah. as an ally. But the, they yes, met, they I mean, he met they Obama at the G8 meeting in Italy for the first time. Yeah, know. but there's yeah. a sense, of course, that what He's we have here is a dictator and a terrorist. Mm, That's right. the symbol. Whether it's true or not doesn't matter. Yeah, and they just got McGrahi returned. That was yeah, something but that. The, uh, the point. Uh, the yeah, point okay, is go ahead. I didn't mean to yeah. step on your line. No, Sorry. no, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the point is, after you go through these different steps, mm -hmm. you wind up with the. the the threat of military action from the UN or from the United States or from a conglomerate of, of countries. And this is what Presi President Bashir has used to intensify nationalism within Khartoum. You mean the threat of an invasion from NATO, uh, uh, from UN forces or yeah. something to spring, to get a sense of nationalism to overthrow and the regime? Wait a minute. I don't understand. Bashir's regime in Khartoum, yes. right? So Bashir, and he got a sense of nationalism for... No, you have no. to think how... Help me out here. Yeah. I don't. I, I got confused there. If you have an invading force... And let's say it's going to be from the United Nations or the United it States. It doesn't matter. Or, okay, an invading yeah. force, yeah. If you have an invading force that's Indeed. coming from the outside... Yeah, yeah, then you rally around the flag. You rally around the flag. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened in... Khartoum. Khartoum right mm -hmm. now. Okay, okay. Now, interestingly enough, the genocide in Darfur has mm. decreased. Seriously? Uh, or seriously. Uh, okay. This, and Why? Uh, uh, because a set of agreements that were reached have, to a certain degree, worked. Okay. To a certain degree, worked. 
and because there are, there are other issues that have come to the fore. And those issues are that the south of Sudan, yeah. which is much bigger, yes. and has that big open, deep, yeah, right, yeah. Uh, is going to uh, has a referendum to secede in 2011. Huh. Yeah. Now, that's the real issue. Okay. That's you have to think yeah. to yourself. Yeah, and it's along those uh, that c cultural divide. It's along the cultural divide. There are economic differences. Uh -huh. There are all kinds of prob uh, Ethnic problems. Ethnic differences. But the question is, is the, is the United States or the West going to intercede in this conflict? That's the question. Is there a serious movement to secede? And is there a uh, leadership element there? Do we recognize somebody <coughs> and what their pla what's their platform? And the what the you know, is South is split between numerous <coughs> parties. Mm -hmm. And uh, different tribal differences. Yes. And the possibility of bringing them together is very difficult. Yeah. Which creates the possibility of anarchy. Right. Fighting mm. within a single region, the mm. South. Yeah. Or fighting warlords between fighting North. Yeah. yeah. Right. Fighting between North and South. Mm -hmm. That's another. That that's a civil war. That yeah. could. That could then spread back to Darfur. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now we're putting and Darfur in a third category. You got the South. Yeah. You got you got, you got Khartoum, the and then you got Darfur. Yeah. And Darfur, you got a lot of Janjawi or something there, and you got all the kinds. Janjawi were um, used by Khartoum. Khartoum, yeah. Basically, to quell a rebellion in the south, and this in is the south. Why I, do I'm think sorry, in in, in Darfur. In, the in the west. Yeah, it okay. was in Darfur. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the uh, the Janjaweed were basically nomad tribes that uh, were used as any authoritarian regime likes to use. Sure. Cheap, mercenaries, uh, cheap yeah, mercenaries. Yeah, yeah right. Um, something Mussolini did, Hitler did. They could do yeah. a little pillaging and, and uh, like we did yeah. with the, per the what were they the Hessians at Trenton? In our uh, Revolutionary War, the United yeah, States I of America, they were they were. There's a lot of we we got Blackwater. I mean, in Iraq, we got Blackwater. They're hired like hands. That. They're like uh, you know, and it puts our military presence much higher because a lot of that stuff is covered by private sector contractors. That's like mercenaries. Uh, yeah, in, in a way it is. Yeah. Uh. But now, if you think to yourself that you want a solution to the problems in Darfur, Darfur yeah. and you want to demobilize these Janjaweed, okay. you know, uh, Darfur, there's not much going on. It's sort of like uh, Sahara or something. They're parts of it. They're yeah. put this in cities, mm -hmm. camps built around them. You've been there so a couple, few times. Yeah. Okay. And Darfur, you've been to uh, Khartoum and that? And I've South? been to Khartoum. I've been to uh, different areas in, Dar in Darfur. Okay. And there are camps that are just in the desert. UN? I'm sorry? Camps, uh, displacement, I mean, uh, displaced dis people? I mean displaced people, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, in, this, in the... Survival camps, yeah. Yeah, in the uh, desert, there are, uh, there are camps that are sort of built around little cities. Mm -hmm. Very poor. Yeah, yeah. You can see garbage up to here. Yeah, I know. It's, all, yeah. it's terrible. Poverty is so ugly. But it's all over Africa. Uh, it's all over the world, but it is Africa particularly. But yeah, if one's going to do something yeah, about right, that, yeah, yeah. Uh, if one wants to get rid of the Janjaweed mm -hmm. and has to have some kind of employment for them, there's no employment, there's no investment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sanctions are very bad. Mm -hmm. They prevent investment, yeah, obviously. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah. So in a way, this, pr this continues the problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What uh, the, s the second thing, these camps need to either be turned into sustainable cities, mm -hmm. or there should be the right of people to rep uh, to be repatriated. Compensation schemes. Where where the people that are in Darfur are are th they're from? Uh, excuse my ignorance, right? But they're from other parts of the Sudan. 
Many and they've been, they're refugees, like from... They're like refugees. They come and from... And they've been attacked in other parts of Iran, and they've gone into the desert, like... Some the, are... There like, some they, like the uh, Israel, uh, the uh, Hebrews back in the days of Pharaoh or something. There's some tribes that are in Darfur yeah. who live there. The, the four tribe. Oh. Okay, you, is, now that's one of the divisions, yeah. Is that a large group? Uh, yeah. Okay. And the Zag uh, Zagawa tribe. There are various tribes that are in Darfur. I was talking there to are, Yeah, go ahead. There are other refugees yeah. that were attacked uh -huh. because there's also a conflict between North and South, like yeah, I said. Yeah, it's really complex. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and you say the big issue is the possibility of a succession in the South. Right. That's something we uh, have we have we been informed of that much in our news and so forth? Or no. It doesn't seem to be. That's something you... Mm. Yeah, no. but that's the reality, right? That's the reality. Okay. And uh, I was with a group uh, with Conscience International, with uh -huh. U.S. Uh, as I said, I'm chair for U.S. Academics for Peace. Yes. I just Good met. For you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Mm. Uh, I just met our, uh, with a part of a delegation with Senate uh, with General Scott Gration. Oh yes. Okay. Who is yeah, you were uh, President me. Obama's special envoy to Sudan? Right. He said the issue, uh -huh. the issue. Is this secession? I'll be darned. Okay, yeah. I wasn't aware. And the I'm question glad to be is, yeah. how do we treat Sudan? Do we treat it as if we want one stable? I'm sorry, one integrated country, mm, like we have had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we treat it as two? Mm -hmm. Do we treat it as three? There you are. Well, we got 53 countries. And I know. that's a very that's a very big question because if there's secession, mm -hmm. it's very possible that war will begin. War would begin between what? The North South? and South. North and South. We had a civil war in this country, didn't we? With it was all the bloodiest in our history. Yeah, 600,000. Yeah. They had 600,000 killed in Leningrad. Yeah. In 42, was it? They had that awful. And one of, the, one of the things that I think uh, is not discussed that was, that enough. Was just a, that was just a, a, dr uh, 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 a siege. The winter of 42, I think 600,000 in yeah. Leningrad. They but died of starvation. Yes. I mean, it's horrible. Yeah. History is a nightmare. Much of history is a nightmare Hegel from called which we ought to try to awaken, don't you think? Hegel called it a slaughter bench. Yeah. You, know, I think, yeah. I, you know, I think one has to look history yeah. in the face. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. the, um, and recognize that there are actually real problems that, that have to be dealt with that are complicated. Okay, yeah. And when one, s one sees Mia Farrow yeah. saying, I see a refugee and my eyes fill with tears, mm. okay. that's not a solution to a problem. No, it, we used to have Sally Struthers do that. Remember Sally Struthers yeah. always doing that? Yeah, but uh, you know, she to bring young people today, this, <laughs> that's, she's not oh, an issue. I know, but she was really good at it. That was on the uh, Archie Bunker show, yeah. Yeah, But, but she, she was the ad for the people in the background all... Yeah, saving one child at a time. Saving one child at a time with tears. But yeah. yeah, but, it, yeah, but, but okay. that, that, you know, you can say is a bit naive and so mm. This speaks to an actual policy. Okay, I mean, yeah. people are talking about invading, yeah. uh -huh. putting... Uh, or putting sanctions on Darfur, putting a no-fly zone on Darfur, mm -hmm. threatening relations with China over Darfur, mm -hmm. uh, when Darfur may not even be the central issue. Yeah, okay, right. And perhaps, yeah. even, and perhaps even sending military troops. Now, military troops from where? The UN. UN peacekeepers? UN peacekeepers, but supported primarily by the United States and other Western, um, Western nations. Mm -hmm. Now, how does that look to Africa? Uh, well, as a recolonization, uh, uh, they're, they're kind of sensitive around that issue. I think. I they? think they yeah. are, and <laughs> I think yeah. we probably would be too. Yeah, we would be. We, most people don't like being occupied by somebody else. Yeah, I, I've been paying a lot of attention to Africa in the past, only because of my connections with the country of Libya. Uh, it's the only country I've ever been interested in. I think it's really very possibly in a very progressive stance in mm. terms of the world historical developments. I may be wrong, but I think that. But anyway, uh, and they, uh, he now, uh, Gaddafi has come in out of the cold since 2003, gave up the atomic thing, uh, been recognized, you know, as an ambassador here and everything. You know, he's actually played a, rel I mean, I want to say this carefully, a relatively progressive role in trying to build peace in Darfur and between North and South. That's encouraging. He yeah. had conflict with Chad in the past and so forth. And, you know, it, it occurs to me also, as I said, the possibility of, there's the possibility of what, 
the feeling that there may be recolonization or a new imperialism mm. in, in Africa. But one of the things that we don't emphasize enough, yeah. uh -huh. we get carried away over Save Darfur or what have you, uh. when millions are dying in the Congo. Congo is awful. But wait. Sierra the Leone was awful a few years yes. ago. Awful. But part of the way of uh, dealing with this is, I think, for young people and genuine peace activists, mm -hmm. is to begin ta talking about ending uh, arms running or gun running. We are the, the big gun runner. We I are think. the biggest gun runner yeah. in the world. Yeah. France is arming Chad. Uh, France Israel is yeah, fr France had an interest in Chad, yeah, yeah. Uh, as we speak, mm -hmm. um, uh, the foreign minister of Israel mm -hmm. is on a trip through uh, much of Africa. Really? Yeah, over the last, I think, decade, uh, something like $500 million was given to Nigeria in really? arms, uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. sold there are uh, big, there are big source of arms also. Then. And this is an appalling situation. Mm -hmm. And if there's one point I think uh, I wanted to make on your show, yeah, is that this has to become an issue. Mm -hmm. again. Uh, while President Obama has been great on uh, lowering nuclear arms levels. Yes, is that you've been following that? Yeah, this is a very Have progressive. Have you been following the overall question of the arms that exist within the human society yeah. and how destructive they are and everything? Basically, you, can you give me chapter on verse on how destructive the systems are? Or best modeling uh, along those I, lines? I can give you this. <coughs> there are basically 22,000 nuclear weapons in the world. What were how many were there at one time? Uh, well, it's, it, the point is now there's this, uh, there's this number. Okay. Of the 22,000, mm -hmm. 20,000 basically have been controlled by the United States mm -hmm. and the Soviet Union. And one of, the, one of the policies that President Obama has attempted to push forward is a decrease in nuclear uh, arms on both sides. Have they come since the n uh, from They've the treaties that have been made uh, and things are built up mad, you know, up until '79 or so forth? Yeah, well, but this what's is what's happened since but then. But this is this is uh, President or Obama's initiative. '89, yeah, '89, yeah. Okay. The r uh, here, yeah. Uh, this is President Obama's initiative, mm -hmm. uh, and that's a very good thing. I th uh, I think the um, his uh, policy in which he took away the or tr transform the strategy of putting missiles in Poland and Czechoslovakia. That's a major announcement, yeah. That's right. a major yeah. step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that a might very mean he's trying to uh, get uh, the agreement of Russia for sanctions against Iran. Because they knew about that thing they're talking about now, that thing in Iran, and they knew and that, so they were mapping it out ahead maybe to get Russia. Perhaps. And they're going to have to deal with China also to get Perhaps. A meaningful sanctions against Iran. Whether that will work, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, th it's a, this is a very, it's again a very complex Complicated issue. Complicated world, it's Byzantine. And one can only do so much, you know, <laughs> in one show, right? You can only but juggle so many, yeah. But yeah. I think uh, a lot of people have come down on Afghanistan and uh, the, the dangers of a new Vietnam in have Afghanistan. You, have you read Mr. Uh, McChrystal's uh, report? I have. It's something else. It sounds like he wants it to be turned into a Peace Corps. He I can send uh, teachers. Send the, you know. I mean, do you think there's anything to that? Does no. it sound like strategic valley? No. Really, you know, the same kind of thing they were trying to do in Vietnam I think to win the hearts and minds and nation building. I think and that's everything. a small part of it. Yeah. It's did you I see the 60-minute piece with him this last Sunday? Uh, actually, I didn't. It was I'm interesting. Sick. It was. Oh, I'm sorry. You've yeah. been ill. Yeah. That oh, was wait, just cold? the flu. Oh. Only but the flu is right. not the Nile, but it's, it's it, not but the it's so, it, it's swine. Okay. It's not swine flu. Huh? No, the uh, but the the uh, these are, these are uh, issues that you know each deserves its own program. Right. Yeah. But what I think uh, is important is for your viewers to begin to think about one that some that uh, you have to begin to think about the possibility. Of a ban on small arms sales. Small arms, yeah. These are uh, fueling civil wars mm -hmm. in Africa, also in parts of Asia, that are killing 
millions of people. It tears your heart out when you see the little kids with the AK-47. Yeah. Little kids, eight-year-old kids. And where did they get the AK-47? Well, they got them through, uh, we're part of that. You know, yeah. And, and, and there's a good business. It's but good what's business. amazing is how little outrage there is over the large issue. Yeah. 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 And how some some things uh, like Darfur take center stage, uh -huh. even when it's no longer the central issue in Sudan. Yeah, even in Sudan. But why does because it take? Why does it take center? I think stage? it's because of celebrity. Celebrities. Well, yeah. We live you in a celebrity culture, right? Yeah, but this, uh, political consciousness means that you can begin to think about issues without asking what uh, Mia Farrow or Tracy McGrady think. Or Oprah. Or Oprah. No, Oprah is, is beyond, you can't, you can't uh, criticize but Oprah. But you should be able to criticize, uh, yeah. criticize no, I anybody. Understand. No, I understand. But yeah. the, the point isn't that, that celebrities can't take uh, stands on issues. Mm -hmm. I was in Iraq with, uh, uh, with Bian uh, Bianca Jagger. Okay, yeah. A, a, ver a very fine person, very brave person. She also has a master's from the Sorbonne, which uh, nobody, uh, hardly anybody knows, yeah, uh -huh. uh, in political science. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she's a very thoughtful person. Yeah. That's fine. But to simply get involved in, uh, for celebrities to simply get involved in issues, to use their fame, mm. without knowing what's actually going on. Well, does that mean celebrities shouldn't have any thoughts about the larger issues beyond their uh, rating and the hip parade? They used to have a thing called the hip parade. They no, don't have that it anymore. It means you that know what I mean? You have to just all stick to your celebrity all means stardom. No, all it, no, I don't mean that at all. Oh, no, no, you don't. Okay. All it means, like I just said, is, is in a nutshell, if you're going to go public with something, you have to have some idea of what you're talking about. Okay, celebrities often don't, and then they should shut don't. up. Don't. They should shut up. And if they Just want to engage, and, dance, yeah. and if they yeah. want to engage, then they have to be aware of what's going on. And it seems to me, from what I've heard, especially with the Save Dog Four people, mm. that's not the case. They just don't know the facts, ma'am. Is that what Joe they Friday used to that's say? That's what the, uh, what Joe Friday used to say. I think that's fits what the reality. Is that, what, is that what Stephen Broner said? That's what Stephen Broner said. But <laughs> it's not just what Stephen Broner <laughs> said. No, it's so the, yeah. mm. the, the uh, what's amazing is that the real experts yeah. on Sudan, people like Peter Beshtol, okay. uh, Mahmoud Bandani at mm. Columbia, okay. uh, people who spent their, their lives studying this. Uh -huh. uh, well, what are they th saying? What are they? Uh, and you're one of those. You're one of those because you're weighing I, in I, with a great deal of understanding and a hell of a resume. Uh, well, I appreciate that. Mm. But basically, there's very little debate in the academic community. On, on the, are you talking on the Sudan and that? Thing? Yeah. What I've basically Why? tried. Why not? What, uh, how are the lines drawn? How are, how are we dealing with it? And what does it mean for the general the society? It, the difficulty, it's, it's actually an odd situation because academics do tend to write, as you know, for themselves. Another big but fat tome, Mr. Gibbons. Exactly. And yeah. experts read those fat tomes. No. And so they talk about themselves. Mm -hmm. themselves. That may be part of the structure of modern society. Yeah. And there's this chasm that emerges between academics and um, the general public. One of the nice things about your show mm. is you try and bridge that chasm. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just talking to a whole lot of different people. But yeah, that's but yeah. part of what happens. You're trying to do that. And yeah. what's very weird is that, especially in the case of Darfur, it mm -hmm. sort of becomes this designer crisis. Mm -hmm. Designer yeah. crisis. That's, I've called it that. Okay, that's uh, an, you've got that trademark, Steve? Uh, oh, I, I, used it in my, I used it in my book, Get your Peace Out of Reach. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, good, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and we want uh, you to have the, yeah. you, know, you guys looking out for but your But it's an interest, odd, right? it's, it's a yeah. very odd thing. Mm -hmm. Some things just grab the imagination of yeah. a generation. Right, right, and celebrities are important because they can be carriers of that. And I don't want to say that, yeah. uh, that um, people like uh, Mia Farrow or yeah. Tracy McGrady, Basketball Some player. Some guys involved over there too. Some uh, star uh, man, uh, a man, uh, man, somebody. Uh, George recall. Clooney was involved. George Clooney's yeah, involved. Yeah. Yeah. These are obviously people of goodwill. I don't yes, want to impugn right. their, uh, their their motives. Some people do do that. I think that's a mistake. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but be informed. Yeah, you have to inform yourself, uh -huh. and you have to have a politics that makes sense. Okay. You can't start a politics. This is what we did in Iraq. Yeah where you have an assumption, and then you fit the facts to your assumption. Yeah, it went from being weapons of mass destruction, we're going to build a democracy. 
Exactly. Yeah, because and that was the facts on the ground, so you had to adjust to them and everything. And the same damn thing happened in Vietnam, it seems to me. Indeed. And Mr. McNamara Indeed. finally said it was a big, ugly mistake, and it killed three One or four starts, million people. One starts with an image and then builds the facts to justify the image. That's right, yeah. And what we have here is a situation one has an image of a, of a terrible regime in Khartoum. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of slaughter going on mm -hmm. in the South by rebels against uh, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Khartoum. Mm -hmm. A lot of slaughter by le rebels in Darfur. Mm -hmm. one, ha one can't s begin with simplistic solutions. If you want to have peace in Darfur, let me be very simple, uh, clear about it. The road to peace goes to Khart through Khartoum. Through Khartoum. Oh, yeah. You yeah. can't simply define it out of the picture because you don't like them. Yeah, yeah, people have a tendency uh, to do that. Yeah. yeah, and you can't start, especially given the sensitivities of imperialism and colonialism, you can't start by saying, I'm going to pressure you with propaganda. I'm going to pressure you with sanctions. I'm going to pressure you with threats of military action. What else have action. we got? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, and military, then say, yeah. and yeah. then I want you to trust me to negotiate. Yeah, right, right. It right. doesn't work that way. We're going to force you into the corner and then beat the bejesus out of you, and then you're going to negotiate from, um, and we I, have a position and of power, think, you have you nothing. Know, yeah. Uh, yeah. All mm. intelligent diplomacy begins with the carrot and stick. Mm -hmm. And what we have is a constant use of the stick, but no use of carrot. Yeah, right. Or th that much thing. We certainly had that over the last eight years. We may have a some uh, sunlight coming with Mr. And Obama. And here, at now at least, under the Obama, uh, uh, he can make a definitive sentence anyway, and he thinks and you can have a debate. Yeah, right. right. I mean, they're reasonable people. Yeah. What they about you, you? You may disagree yeah. with what they come up with. But you can have an open discussion. Have you have you been following the develop of the continent of Africa? I've been following it because I'm interested in Libya, and I happen to have a different uh, take. I may have be dissuaded from that, but I still think that they've got ahead of the curve the way the United States of America was ahead of the curve to feudal Europe uh, in terms of legitimacy in a historical sense. But that's a huge issue. But I've been that following I've been following it for the continent of Africa because he's now the d head of the African Union. He's come in out of the cold. He's made, uh, he's had contact with Chavez a lot. She was in, he went to Venezuela again, he did. And then he's also had contact with Ahmadinejad, which is reaching out to the Arab, uh, or to the, uh, the Islamic, Iranians, the Islamic, yeah. the Islamic. But he's reaching out, but he's reaching a great deal of attention to the continent of Africa. And he's director of the, he's the president of the African Union. And he has had as his ally in that, in fact, he, it was bad. I was sorry he left New York. He was a friend of mine, Ali Trachey, who was the ambassador to the UN for many years. He was there when Reagan bombed and killed his daughter and so forth, the act of terrorism and so forth. And he was touted as a, as a terrorist over many of these years. He had to be smuggled in the back door <coughs> to get there and no. all of that. But anyway, he's now, he's now in and out of the cold. He met with Obama briefly in uh, Italy when the G8 met. And now what he's been paying attention, and Mr. Trachey was traveling all over Africa, and they were moving toward the, there's 54, 53 countries in Africa, and they were moving toward, um, uh, a, a, he's in touch with all of them, and he was the ambassador from there, and they're moving toward, I don't know if you saw it, they had, I think, believe they had half of the heads of state up in Tripoli, or up in CERT near Tripoli, including Bashir. Including um, well, yes, uh, the guy Africa. from who's the guy from uh, you know Zimbabwe? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, 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 Robert Mugabe. Mugabe. They but were there. They were all there, and they're they're writing the basic documents and so forth to establish uh, United States of Africa as an entity. Have you been following any of that? I Do you think it makes any sense? A lot of people are naysayers, but they seem to be seriously laying the groundwork for that kind of well a entity. What do you think? I of think that? this is put it to you this way. I think the nation state is a Western import to Africa. Okay. It's yeah. part of it's part of the problem. The loyalties are still tribal. Too much of the world, really. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. It's, it's it, the loyalties are still tribal, familial yeah. in the broader sense. Right, right, right. Religious. Four hundred languages in Sudan. Uh, uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, and the um, the diff I mean, the difficulties of building a. United States of Africa is going to be even more complicated than but building. But they're serious. Uh, President right. President Wadi from Senegal, he 
He did you are you familiar with yeah, him? a bit. Yeah. Have you, have you read? He's a real do you realize he's a real world class intellectual? There are, well, world there, class. Uh, well, there are. He was. He was. Uh, you know, a economic. Well, the tradition. I mean, the tradition of African thought is very rich, mm -hmm. and um, part of our own provincialism is we don't think of um, people like Chinua Achebe, uh -huh. uh, Nobel Prize winner, or um, Kwame Nkrumah. Uh, uh, you, well, you Pan Africa. Like See, moving Franz to Pan Africa. Franz Fanon. Yeah, right. Um, wretched of the world. Uh, uh, the wretched of the earth. Uh, exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there, there, yeah. Are, there, uh, yeah. there. My uh, particular but one what, I like what, is what, Albert, uh, Albert Memmi. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the, the point is, it, these are very, very difficult things to do if you can't build a state. Yeah. Okay. It's awfully see. difficult to build an entire continent mm -hmm. into a state. Well, sometimes it's easier to do than you might. No, it, it's easier to do pattern recognition rather than going into all the, the details of the differentiation. The, this is maybe uh, the, fifty-three. Uh, they had half the presidents up there signing on to what it. What Wade is what all in support what of What organization it. controls the army? Well, which are, they don't have to. They have to put together a, an army. That's I think one of the things Qaddafi's in doing. Qaddafi is I think a, that's going to be a very, very difficult thing to do. Very difficult. And a lot of people say if it's impossible. The, if they look at the Congo and they look at Sierra Leone and they look at the mess. I would personally be I was very happy. Mm. I mean, this is me from the outside. I can't make the judgment, obviously, for these people. Mm. But from the outside, I would think one of the crucial things would be greater economic cooperation yeah. within. Right. Well, it the African be Union right. is beset by a lack of resources. Mm -hmm. It's beset by lack of expertise. It's better than the Office of African Unity uh, or the uh, you know the thing that went preceded. The African Union is getting more yeah, together uh, than it was. But I know you have to think of it in terms of what uh, the problems that are around today. Yeah. Okay. It's we have a world society today, not simply Africa and, and, and the United States. And one of the things that Conscious International is trying to do, U.S. Academics for Peace is trying to do, is to build better bridges mm -hmm. between, uh, if you like, the, the Western world, yeah. uh, the West and the rest, European, uh, yeah. as, as, uh, as many like to say. And that's, a, um, uh, that's, that's an enormous task. One begins in little ways. Uh, well, to build a real relationship of dialogue right. is, yeah. we've been just using the Washington Consensus as a thing we're going to impose. Exactly. Which Rome had that notion, I think. Yeah. You know, and it doesn't and sit well with a we lot of And what we found people, yeah. was that uh, different regimes which are uh, completely shut out by mm. Washington yeah. can be affected by citizen diplomacy you see, in small ways. Yeah. Uh, uh, forgetting now, uh, Gaddafi is very difficult. I, I mean, know he's yeah. difficult. Did and you, uh, did you, did you see his talk at the UN? He yeah, was all over and the uh, lot. Yeah, and and but the point I the mm. point is, you want groups that are invited into uh, these th these countries. It's very difficult to uh, to to do this kind of work. And you try and meet with people, yeah. you try and with leaders of parties, right. leaders of tribes. Right. You, uh, you try and learn a bit about the traditions. Right. You don't go in wagging a finger. We do it and a lot. Yeah. They call and it the ugly American. And, and you try and in some way build a meaningful basis for future negotiations. Yeah. And you go, it, this is a very slow process. Mm. And uh, w one of the things I've learned is that it takes an awful lot to do a little. <laughs> it takes a lot to do a little? Yeah, an awful lot to do a little. And is it by reverse? Uh, uh, you, uh, you could do it awful, you can do a little or you can get a lot? I mean, can you reverse that? Uh, by doing a little? Let me put it to you this you way. You know, uh, the ant and the grasshopper or something, I, uh, some Aesop fable about how you can do everything with nothing. Uh, or you can do more and more with less. That's a term in, going in design. Uh, you're, going to, uh, you're going to have to, I think, mm -hmm. uh, recognize that this is a painful process and it's a difficult process because in a certain way these are victims of, of imperialism and they're working under circumstances mm -hmm. uh, in which the accountability of governments to their people uh -huh. isn't real because they're not there's no bureaucratic structure yeah. there's no clear delineation of offices right, right. Uh, elections uh, I mean, we have we have fraud Fra here, Karzai, but Karzai, yeah. yeah, 
Mm. And uh, these are real issues. And personally, I, I take no backseat to anyone on human rights questions. Okay, right. right. And um, there's no dictator that I can think of that I actually support, mm -hmm. uh, whether that's Castro or, or uh, Gaddafi or anyone else. The only way you know if, uh, if the national will is being e expressed mm. is if people can vote. And so what we've got to concentrate on with regard to the Sudan Okay. Is yeah. a the elections that are going to be taking place in when, 2010? When? 2010. Okay. And yeah. the referendum on secession of the South. That's in 11. 2011. That's in 2011. Is that going to be across the whole land or what? Is that going to be in the South or how's that's that going to be in the South? That's going to be in the South. That's going to be a thing done in the South, and yeah. that's major. And this fellow, what's his name again? The the Obama advisor on that. Scott he Grayson. He said that's the major issue. And that he will presented that to you. Is he presented it in the literature and everything? Or did that come out as an issue that's understood well he brought by the people? He or was that in a personal he conversation? This was in a call? personal conversation. Okay. Actually, it's a Are you revealing yesterday. something? Should we cut the tape? No. Should we not take it out or something? No, that's you know? fine. Okay. Yeah. All uh, the ships at sea, Walter Winter was the latest. I, yeah. And I think, and uh, I can tell you also that uh, we're in a, a time now mm -hmm. when the kind of vilification without uh, without practical policy mm -hmm. uh, implications that have been pushed by the uh, reigning advocacy groups about Darfur, yeah. this can produce great dangers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, one of the things I was struck by General Gratian saying, yeah. who's a very articulate and very Is intelligent okay, man. Very yeah. encouraging, yeah. Uh, well I mean, got a couple minutes left. You disagree? Yeah, 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 well, just to close up. Yeah. He said, the next three months could decide the next three years. Well, where? Now, in that area. Huh? Yeah. Next three, uh, say it again? The next three months can decide the next three years. Well, we've got, a, we got, a, we got a, a, a thing, a, an election coming up in We've got to be thinking about. Three months, you're going to have an election that we were focusing on. You yeah. said in, 19, in 2010. And That's not going to happen within three months. And it's a question of what choices the United States makes. Oh, uh, for us. Yeah, uh -huh. in terms of policy to... Uh, to the Sudan and elsewhere. Yeah, we got El we got a thing in uh, Afghanistan. <coughs> we're looking Excuse at me. McChrystal, and we just did a program with the Pashtun. Do you know how large that Pashtun nation? That's enormous. Forty-three million. Yes. Half the population of Afghanistan is in a tribal group. We just it's did programs with it's them. It's remarkable mm -hmm. how little we know. We're so ignorant, aren't we? But. It you know, ignorance is okay if mm. you don't try and then translate it into <laughs> policy. <laughs> yes, you don't try I mean, to. <laughs> yes. Right? They and you said the same thing with too, the celebrity. You're too young to remember um, it pays to be ignorant, right? It pays to be ignorant, to be dense, mm, to be no, dumb. To they, there was a radio show back at the time of Dr. IQ uh, and all that. They had a anything, and they'd ask questions like, who's buried in Grant's tomb? And they'd make comic things and everything. Yeah. Anyway, the, all kinds of problems. I really appreciate the word. And your okay. understanding of Darfur, it's a major sec uh, center of uh, concern. And you've been doing really good writing and everything like that. And I, I thank you really Appreciate much for that. informing us and everything. And we'll keep our eye on it. There's signs I don't know. It sure is an interesting time. It's a very challenging time we live in. You optimistic we'll for the, the human prospect, Stephen? Uh, pessimism of the intellect, optimism of the will. <laughs> I think that's got it both ways, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. right. Anyway, so good to see you Thank again. Thank you so much. No, it's my pleasure and everything. And uh, y It's been your pleasure to have the perception of a major scholar. You should look at his CV. It's available and so forth. He's uh, indefatigable. And, uh